Ah, uh, we've had a bit of a YouTube week here. Radio Dead Air. You are having a bit of a week, yeah. Yeah, over a week, at least with the internet's <laughs> fucked and I have health issues. We're not going to get into that, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, this, this is, this is, it doesn't, it never rains, but it plops giant messy turds. <laughs> There's a there's a there's a phrase from Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere that I never remember accurately, but it's always but it's something like the main character had found that events were cowards and waited until they could all attack you at once as a gang instead of all coming individually. <sighs> well. We can still do this, apparently. Let's just hope this holds up for one hour. You can do yeah. it. Fucking phone internet to make this work. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of, hor sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? Come hell or high water, this fucking segment's getting done. God damn it. You buy yes! And you know what? Let, let, let's kick things off with a bang this week. Uh, you used to have substitute teachers? Yeah. And it, it, I don't know how... It, this seems like it was everybody's go-to for the substitute teacher. They'd get in the class, and they'd wheel out the TV. And then they put on something, and they'd sit. They turn off the lights, put on something, and that's it. That's all they did. They just babysat yeah. you while you like, watched. I don't even know any of you. I could give a fuck. Right. I'm not putting up with your shit. Well, here's a video on how they make crayons. That didn't quite go to plan. Uh, this uh, for this one poor substitute teacher. Um, porn accidentally plays in history class at Dearborn grade school. Was it at least like historical porn? <laughs> a substitute teacher at a Dearborn school was trying to play a video of Lewis and Clark for history class, but instead pornography began playing. Porn played for at least 30 seconds in front of a U.S. history class full of seventh grade kids before the teacher was able to turn the computer off at O.L. Smith. Lewis and Clark exploring the great beyond. <laughs> bow, chicka, bow, bow. Um, I love this quote from, uh, the, quote, they don't seem to care at all, said Christina Lentz. The fact that this would be a, a school is a problem. The, this, the, I love that the seventh graders just don't give a fuck. Um, it's probably the best day of school they've had in a while. Happened on March 13th when the substitute teacher mis mistakenly showed a lesson in something else. Dearborn Public Schools are blaming it on a technical glitch. Okay. Like, uh, were they pulling these videos from a streaming service? I don't know. The, this particular instance, it appears there was some type of loophole, one time too many, but very isolated. The school communications director there, uh, we're looking at the particular instance and we make sure this doesn't happen again. Um, was oh, it, it, it sounds like it was a website. Yeah. Okay. The substitute teacher that was in the class was unaware that this was there. So apparently their porn filter wasn't quite working. How do you, how do you go how do you get from Lewis and Clark documentary to porn? How many hops are there between yeah, that seriously. and the internet? What kind of typo yeah gives you that? I mean did did, did you type instead of Lewis and Clark, did you type Lewis in Clark? <laughs> <laughs> Was that was that dead? Because, you know. I mean, if we were talking Sacagawea, that's a word that you could typo in some interesting ways, probably. Yeah. 
I just, I, I love the, the the entire thing that says they don't think it was a kid doing a prank. They don't quite know how this. Everyone's just like, this was a fluke. Yeah. This was an act of God. Their, their, their collective explanation is, hmm? and we don't. I, it's it's. Don't look at me. Look over there. Oh no, no, over there. It. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. You know what? In seventh grade, they should know about lube anyway. <laughs> Next story. This is from uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina. This is from the Upstate, close to the but ding 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 ding. Um. So uh, we've. This is probably the most inventive use I've seen of Axe body spray. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, he, it, it, he, he, he was a pioneer. It's the scientific method. He, he had to try it to find out it, it did not work. Um, did you get the link? I didn't. There you go. Uh, man tried to hide alcohol on breath with Axe body spray. Ew. <laughs> It did not work. Do you know what the main, what the top ingredient in almost every fragrance is? Mm -hmm. Alcohol. Alcohol, yes. So that's what they're made of, guys. I am going to cover up the smell of alcohol with the alcohol. It's I mean, it's so... a different kind of alcohol, but still. Um state newspaper reports that Spartanburg County Sheriff's deputy stopped 49 year old Efren Mencia Ramirez on Saturday night after they say he sped past a deputy on Interstate 85 before swerving into another lane. Incident report says <gasps> there was a 12 pack of beer on the floor and 10 of the beers were nearly empty. The report says Mencia Ramirez had an open bottle between his legs exhibited signs of intoxication, and failed field sobriety. And you thought chugging some Axe was going to cover all that? Yeah, well, you know, it's so strong. You had a bottle in your crotch. Well, you know, if you just pay attention to Axe, it does magic things. Also, you sprayed Axe in your mouth. <laughs> Sober people don't do that. <laughs> Uh, this was this is a bad plan, and I can't believe this guy's still alive. I can't either. That was special. Ten beers and a bottle of mystery stuff, like or were they bottled beers? My, I guess they were bottled beers. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm thinking like ten beers and a bottle of Jack or something. Well, no, no. He's he's just he he was working on number eleven. Still had number twelve to go. Oh. Yeah. Like, how big is that dude's bladder? Amazing, I would say. Right? Who can imbibe that much liquid and not just be constantly peeing? It's magic. Uh, all right. Oh, God. So if there wasn't a video, and I'm not going to play this video, because I can't play this video and put it on YouTube. Um, is it porn? <laughs> for some people, yes. Um, because the the story doesn't have any proper names. It's one. Well, it does. It does name the airport. It does have some stuff, but uh, but there is the video. So this did happen, and it's. We always say, why do people do these things? And this guy at least had a reason. It was not a good reason, but it was a reason. Naked Russian man tries to board plane, claiming to be more aerodynamic. Naked man attempted to board a plane at Moscow's uh, Domodedovo airport while shouting that clothes make him less aerodynamic. Man passed through Ural uh, Airlines flight registration before suddenly stripping off his clothes 
and running stark naked onto the jet bridge. He shouted he was naked because clothing impairs the aerodynamics of the body. He flies with more agility when undressed. Uh, quotes a fellow passenger. Dude intruder was intercepted by airport staff before he could make it onto the plane to Crimea. He was later detained by police officers. Now, I know other countries do things differently, but yeah. in Russia, you still get inside the plane, right? It's Soviet Russia. Plane get inside you. <laughs> you still, they still let you inside the plane. You don't have to hang on to the wing, right? Because <laughs> assuming that's that's, inside a, that's the, plane, the economy really see how this makes much of a difference. That's the new super economy seats. Oh, that's, they just strap you to the wing. They just strap your ass to the wing. In that case, being naked would probably. I mean, you'd freeze to death. <laughs> but you would be more aerodynamic. But if you're inside the plane, I don't think it's really going to help. This was a dare. I bet you money. This, this sounds was a... like vodka. <laughs> Somebody dared. No, no, no. Someone dared this motherfucker to do it. And he said, or okay. That drug that turns your skin into scales. Because <laughs> look at this dude's knees. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, Keep in mind, he was probably tackled by the cops. Yeah. That's kind of what they do to you when you run around naked. Somebody going to tackle you at some point. And it's Is not happening. that Twilight Zone episode really happened? <laughs> Is this what Shatner really saw? <laughs> There's something on the wing of the plane. It's a <laughs> penis. Russian man. <laughs> I mean, all that stuff with Cold War allegories, right? Yes. <laughs> Oh my god. What? And nobody wants to have to tackle the naked guy. What? Nobody wants to have to tackle the naked guy. You don't want to be tackled when you're naked. You don't want to do the tackling of the naked person. It's not happy for anybody. No. It's just... <laughs> Boner at 20,000 feet. You don't want your balls rubbing on airport floor. Oh, oh god, no. That's like or a, that like that jetway carpet. It's like hell's petri dish. Yeah. <clears throat> uh well, we have even more stupid. Um They are in America because we've had kind of a constant <laughs> war going for the past 20 years almost. Uh the, employers of all stripes tend to be very lenient when you say you have to take leave for military purposes. Um, uh, you're volunteering your time, defending your country, all that kind of stuff, very important. With that in mind, oh, this guy can eat a dick. Um, Denver deputy sheriff accused of forging documents to take paid fake military leave. Deputy Sheriff with the Denver Sheriff Department is accused of forging documents to take military leave. He was arrested Tuesday. Matthew Jeremiah Pemberton, 25, is accused of giving forged military orders to the DSD Scheduling Department, claiming he was attending U.S. Army training and needed time off with pay when no legitimate orders were issued. He's also accused of forging military orders to reflect that he needed military leave in lieu of reporting for his shift between December 2017 and December 2018. By fraudulently taking military leave, Pemberton is accused of having cost the city and county of Denver approximately $20,000 in his pay and the overtime pay for other deputies. Now, here's how he got caught. And you're gonna... This is, this is precious. A staff member noticed irregularities in the fake military orders, which included dates typed in Wingdings font. Yeah. I don't, I don't think the military uses... It took them a year to catch that? <laughs> <laughs> hey! Hey, Davey! That pinwheel isn't a date. 
da Davy, come over here. Now, I'm trying to make out what the dates on this are. Uh, is that a zero? Or is that a finger pointing to the left? I can't tell. That's some crack detective work, Denver Sheriff's <laughs> Department. It's the, I love that. It's the fucking police. But I also want to point out, maybe you get what you paid for, because over a year in his wages and the overtime of other deputies, he cost 20 grand. Well, maybe it was, maybe they they had to like discount it a little bit because he is maybe getting paid by the, what you pay for. Well, he's getting paid by the army too. So it might not be paying him exclusively what his wages would be, but still that's, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm pretty sure they use times new Roman. Maybe they use courier. Not a lot of wingdings in official military documentation. I'm not, not a lot. I'm not I seeing mean, Dan's, Dan's old military files are in this room in a file cabinet. And there's not a pinwheel to be found. No. Yeah, I'm not seeing like a, an order for, you know, uh, I wish you boys all the best. God's luck to you. Heart sign from yeah. your commanding officer. I don't, I don't I don't see that. Yeah, I know my old unit used Comic Sans, so. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Your Fuck military his... records are etched into stone tablets. They didn't have computers back then. Fuck this guy, man. This guy sucks. Yeah. That is, that is low. That's, that's some bullshit. Ugh. And, well, like, you live there. Did you think nobody would see you? Nah, it's not me. It's my twin brother. He's in the military. We're very proud of him. Yeah. Uh, well, here's one from your neck of the woods. Um, oh, boy. Jersey. It's almost as bad. And way more idiotic, actually. Um, state workers stole from boys team, then robbed bank to pay it back. Wow. For manager of an Ocean County baseball team, the attempted cover-up was worse than the original crime. Michael Walters, 52, was arrested Thursday after being accused of stealing more than $6,500 from his team in Manchester, then robbing a bank in neighboring Berkeley in order to pay it back. Police said he used oh, his... Oh, wait, there's more! Police say he used his government-owned vehicle from his job with the state's child welfare agency as the getaway car. Wow. That's a lot. Police first became involved on Wednesday when coaches and teams representative for Local Boys 10U uh, baseball team contacted them. Their worries Walters might have been pilfering funds that were meant for equipment. Their suspicions were raised when Walters was unable to pay one of the team's fundraising winners. The next day, Walters arrived at the Manchester police and told officers he had come into a large amount of cash, which he was able to use to pay back the team. Officers in Manchester were already aware their colleagues in Berkeley were investigating a robbery. Uh, police say the heavily disguised masked bandit walked into the bank, handed the teller a note demanding money, and walked out with the cash. Using residential surveillance video, Berkeley police say they watched Walter's vehicle, which belongs to the Division of Child Protection and Permanency. With the car seen near the bank, they said the car was a perfect match. So what you did was, you, a child protection employee, mm -hmm. stole a bunch of money from some kids. Yes. $6,500. You went and robbed a bank. Yes. And then you walked into the police department and said, why, since yesterday, $6,500 has fallen into my lap. I checked the couch cushions. It was all there. You never know what you'll I, find. I went to Coinstar. You wouldn't believe how much you can fit in a jar. Fucking Coinstar, man. Yeah. And when you did that, you used your state employee vehicle. Yes. Yes, he did. Well, you know, what's he supposed to do? Use his own car? Gas is expensive. 
They let this man work with children. Yes, they did. And you know what? If he'd asked those children, they probably could have planned a better heist. <laughs> <laughs> I just... I've committed a crime. How do I s get myself out of this? Commit more crime! In the stupidest way possible. Oh, it's robbing a bank! How hard can it be? How hard can it fucking be, you know? You go Cops in... Cops aren't gonna ask where I got the money. What? Cops aren't gonna ask where I got the money. Right, you know. You go in, you give them note, you go out, but a bada bing, bada boom, you're all done. Hey, it's easy. No, no, it's not. Wow. Yeah. I don't think you're gonna keep that job. <laughs> no. I think you're gonna lose your, your state supplied vehicle. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Caesar in the channel is saying at least he could have reported the car stolen. Anything. Anything, you know. If you waited more than a fucking day to walk into the police station with the money. You could have got one of those little electric scooters, maybe. What are you going to tell the cops? You turned tricks all night? <laughs> <laughs> maybe someone had a really, like, a hardcore kingpin fetish. Like you sold... <laughs> Everything you own? Oh, our final one this week. We got Vidya. Which, if you're watching this live, is going to be a little pixelated. Sorry, we're having tr we're having technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Let's uh, let's go, let's go to the tape, shall we? Um, I'll give Tara the story and get the video up on the screen. <laughs> And here we go. No, that's not the right one. That's the right one. Your wedding was so perfect. How did you do it? Um, that's the wrong one either. A woman in Ohio went to great lengths on Monday to avoid getting pulled over by troopers. Video shows Imani Edwards smashed into multiple police cars nearly hit several officers in the process and sped through an intersection with a red light. Um, even the back end of her SUV smashed in. She still didn't stop. The reason for the chase... She says she was late for work. Okay. Ohio State Troopers were chasing the vehicle after the woman behind the wheel uh, fled the tra a traffic stop. Soon, Newburgh Heights police joined in the chase. At one point, law enforcement thought they had her boxed her in. <laughs> but in the dash cam video, you could see the driver make a desperate and dangerous move. Even as an officer stood right outside the driver's side window with his gun drawn, she hit the gas nearly running down police and ramming two police cruisers. Um, Do you think they're not going to find you? <laughs> they're going to find you. After the chase left the interstate, video shows the car, the driver tear through residential streets of Cleveland. Ironically, she continued to use the turn signal. Well, good for you. You don't want to be irresponsible now. <laughs> Even after police damaged the vehicle so bad that her hatchback was practically dangling, she kept right on going. Troopers finally stopped her by forcing her onto a curb into a pole. She could not go forward anymore. When an officer asked her what she was doing, Edward says, I was on my way to work. Where the fuck do you work? Oh, come on. You've told me about your retail experiences. <laughs> this is true. You have... <laughs> you know... Hey, look, I got, I got punctuality problems. <laughs> I live half my life 15 minutes late. If I'm on time for something, it's because he was involved. And I will run from the cops. <laughs> but come on! <laughs> Yeah, but man, yeah, I can't tell you how many times when I used to work retail that they give you that bullshit. You clocked in at 501. Yeah. You're supposed to, you should get here early and clock in early, but that would be, you would have to pay me. We'll just clock out early. Well, that when would, I work 
Starbucks I got a talking to, they were like, we notice you like to show up on time. Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, that doesn't really work for us. We need you to show up about 10 minutes early so that you can already, like, be working when your shift starts. Like, we want you taking your first order at 4 o'clock. Okay, so you paying really, me for that 10 minutes? You know? So you really need to be here at 10 of. And the problem was, you couldn't punch in before your shift started. But the computers would routinely shit the bed when you tried to punch in and out. So it was like this weird, delicate dance of when do I arrive? When can I punch in? Like, you had, if you punch in at 359, you got to talking to about that. Yeah, so it's 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 a it's a hellscape is pretty much what it is. So you you yeah. I, I I you know what thinking about it, I'm like yeah I I, I feel you, lady, because they're like I don't think you feel. Are you dedicated to your work here? <laughs> no, but I need yeah. money because I like there's, eating. There's no job I've ever cared about that much. No. What there with that when there's a dude with a gun. In my face, I decide to mow through him. There's no job. And I and I I love what I do right now. I am professionally nice to cats and it's great. I'm not mowing people down to get to those cats. Because I feel like that kind of cancels out the good karma. She fucked up that car too. Yeah. And just kept going. Like, this will be fine. This will be fine. They can buff that out. No big deal. Just got to get past this. Clock in. Everything's like, good. Who the fuck is your boss? <laughs> Miranda Priestly nightmare <laughs> do you work for? <laughs> that this seemed better than being late for work. <laughs> Are you the person with the nuclear codes? <laughs> no. Oh, I just, I, mother, why did, oh, I just, I, I'm amazed at the damage she put on that yeah, little said, car. What kind of car is this? Because that should be their new ad. I know, yeah, they just play this video back as like advertisements, right. like. <laughs> no matter how many fucking times you get hit, you can just keep going. We'll get you there. That's, that's just that, we'll get you there. When the apocalypse comes, you can just drive right through that motherfucker. He'll get you there. Mow through some zombies. You don't give a fuck. Where are you going? We don't care. We'll fucking get you there. Half the car fall the fuck off. Doesn't matter. We'll keep going. <laughs> it's like the third act of Good Omen. <laughs> oh, so yeah, that's uh, the, the first thing we learned this week is no job is worth no, man, like capitalism has fucked our shit up. Do not try to drive through the cops. Mm -mm. Late stage capitalism just suck. Just it's it's getting weirder and weirder. Like people are like, when the dystopia comes, this is the dystopia. Mm -hmm. We we've learned that <clears throat> despite what the White House would have you believe, um, the solution to crime is not more crime. No. That you know, um, that that's one of those. You, you really need a better role model on that yeah. one. Um, we've learned that, <laughs> and despite what the White House would tell you, using government resources to do your crime also not a great idea. Not a great idea. Um, we've learned that if you are going to forge official documents, spot check your font choices. Yeah, very important. Very, very, it's critical. Spot check those, those spot choices. Um, we've learned that in Russia, they have very different standards for airline travel. Like, I thought Ryanair was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize they could just kick you the fuck out. Um, we've learned that the solution to getting alcohol off your breath is not more alcohol. Especially, that's not even, like, drinkable alcohol. That's, like, wood grain alcohol, isn't it? And if, if the goal is to convince someone you're sober, spraying Axe in your mouth, <laughs> gonna be a miss every time. That's not, yeah, that, I wouldn't even do that drunk. 
I'm no. Drunk. So that that is that is like you gotta be drunk. drunk enough that your taste buds have shut the fuck down. His brain obviously had, and finally, we've learned. Um, sometimes the substitute teacher can end up being cooler than you expect, <laughs> and more educational. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be dining out on that Lewis in Clark bit for like weeks. 